Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial for the feed scroll generator for Autodesk Inventor. Uh, this tool allows you to create uh, the kind of geometry that we're looking at in front of us, which is useful feeding bottles along a production line um, using the scroll. Uh, the bottle pitch may need to be varied, the bottle rotation may need to be varied as well, and the bottle shape can obviously vary on the kind of product you're transporting. Um, we've got double shafts being displayed in front of us, with each shaft taking half of the bottle profile, so to speak. This isn't always the case, of course, in, uh, in reality. Um, just illustrates the capabilities of this tool. Um, so let me just drive a constraint here to show you uh, what I'm on about. And if I just speed this up a bit, you can see the bottles rotating a bit more clearly, particularly the bottle in the middle. You can see that the pitch is also changing as well as the bottle rotating at the same time. So we're going to use the tool now to generate something similar to the, the bottom uh, pair of shafts that we've got here um, with a triangular bottle shape. OK, so we just need a part file open to start using the tool, any part file, and I can activate the tool with this uh, feed scroll button up the top here. And it's going to load a feed scroll with the default settings, um, and it's going to bring up my form where I can specify the um, the shaft and the bottle. So before we look at the shaft properties, let's just um, edit the bottle shape, and that will take us into a uh, into a, a normal inventor sketch environment. I'm going to uh, delete the existing sketch geometry. So when I do that, I'm dragging from left to right and deleting that to preserve the center point for the bottle um, uh, location. And then I'm just going to use the normal inventor tools in here, the sketch tools. So I'll, I'll create a three-sided polygon. Um, I'm going to have the triangle point uh, pointing in initially for this in the first shaft that I'm generating. Um, and I'll size it up something sensible and I might put a fillet or two on there. I don't have to put fillets on there, um, the, the, the tool will work without fillets but uh, it's going to look smoother obviously if I put some fillets on there. Um, okay it says one dimension needed so that's going to be just the horizontal constraint uh, for the bottle here. So I'm going to finish that sketch. I can accept the error I get because the tool itself when I hit the generate button again here is going to uh, rebuild the uh, the extrusion for the bottle for me anyway so I'm just going to say yes to that and it's rebuilt the bottle extrusion for me now okay so I get a preview here I'm using a spaceball 3d mouse to um, spin the model around I get a preview of what the shaft uh, the, the, the root of the bottle along the shaft is going to look like um, if I want to now make some changes and actually specify the shaft itself I'm going to pick a length in here, so I'll just say I want a length of 500, and you see that the preview sort of updates as I'm going. Um, start uh, bottle velocity of say, th uh, th actually, that's too much, let's make that 200 maybe. Yeah, and the end bottle velocity can be a bit higher, so I'll make that 350 maybe. Um, you can have a lead in and a lead out where the bottle velocity doesn't transition. Uh, before it starts transitioning basically so I'll have a, a long um, section where I've got a bottle velocity of 200 and then it will transition after that so I'll say um, you can see the preview updating down the bottom there as well um, I can adjust the uh, spacing of the bottle away or closer to the shaft you can see the preview of it updating there type in any numbers you want there but what I want is the bottle um, center point to be positioned on the outside of the shaft OD so if my shaft OD is um, 60 you know, in this case then um, I do want the center point to be there um, I can either specify or not specify bottle rotation um, in this case I'm going to start from zero my end bottle rotation I'm just going to have a simple rotation of uh, 60 degrees simple rotation so just a small rotation I'm specifying and also uh, a lead in and lead out um, before the bottle starts rotating so I can I can make that zero if I want um, but uh, that's fine I'll, I'll set that to be zero so it starts rotating instantly basically and I can reverse the bottle rotation if I want um, which I'll have to do for the other half of the shaft in a minute so um, 
Well, also, actually, it's important whether I reverse the shaft or have the shaft in a forward direction. So I'm going to make it go forward here. Um, my shaft speed will also obviously affect the uh, the pitch um, of the bottle. So I'm going to leave that at 250 RPM. Uh, this slider for accuracy is very important. Obviously, you might want to do a, a, a test run with a lower accuracy to, to see how it looks um, before you go with the higher accuracies. You can see it tells me the spacing of the construction grid that's going to be um, create uh, that's going to be used to create the the solid geometry. Um, so if I put it on highest accuracy, I'm, I'm creating a construction grid then at not you know, a third of a millimeter spacing for the entire length of this shaft um, in sort of U and V direction. So that's going to create a very fine mesh. Um, so I'm going to uh, be a bit lighter on it here. I'm going to just say I want a sort of medium to low accuracy here um, just to make it run a bit faster. Um, we've got an extra bottle smoothing button here. I'm going to leave this off. You can read the help files for what this is. It's really only if you've got very angular bottle profiles with no smoothed edges on there. Um, and uh, you can help the program out by telling it whether you've got a simple bottle or a complex bottle. I, I consider this one to be pretty simple, so I'm going to put it more towards the simple side here. Um, so that it, it actually generates it a bit quicker if we if we have a simple bottle. Um, I'm just going to check my options in here before I hit go. So I'll go for fastest processing. I don't want zero bottle smoothing because that's only if you don't have uh, smoothed edges for the bottle. And so I'm going to hit save on that. And um, the next thing that's really handy and valuable is to be able to create a blocky uh, preview build. So if I just hit that button we we'll just get to see what it's going to look like um, roughly without actually going to all the trouble of creating the lofts and the lofted surfaces so you should see the progress bar should be pretty quick for the preview geometry um, even if you've got a really accurate setting applied so I can see the uh, preview scroll and you can see that is um, blocky geometry here you can't you know really machine that or use that for anything sensible it's just preview that's all um, and I can see the bottle rotating until it becomes straight like I told it to there and also the pitch changing so I'm pretty happy with that if I wasn't of course I could just go and um, you know try it again until I am happy with the preview geometry so I'm going to go ahead now it's saved my settings I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit a smooth build now and uh, get some, some nice lofted geometry out of that. Okay, so this can take anywhere from uh, a minute or two to, I mean, if you set it on highest accuracy, that can take upwards of an hour or two um, to create um, just because it's, it's sampling hundreds of thousands, if not more than a million points along the length of the shaft in order to get the geometry uh, extremely accurate to within probably a couple of hundredths of a millimeter. Um, so uh, I'm gonna pause this for a second until we get the, you can see the progress bar going there, so it's gonna be a couple of minutes to create. Right, I'm just unpausing it here so you can see the construction geometry being used to create those, uh, those actual surfaces. So because I've used quite a low accuracy, you can actually see the spacing of the construction lines here that are being used to create the shaft. Now it's created all the surfaces, it's going to be um, stitching it all together into a proper solid body for us. Okay, so we've got our solid geometry now that we can do anything we like with. Uh, it's nice and smooth as you can see. We haven't got any issues. Um, we haven't created any particularly demanding geometry here, so Inventor has been able to stitch it together nice and easily. Um, we can do a, a quick uh, zebra analysis on, on it if we want, um, just to check uh, some of the con uh, how continuous those surfaces are. So you can see that's pretty good. We've got good G2 surface continuity there all the way across. Um, Okay, so I'm going to delete that zebra analysis. Um, 
And the next thing, you don't have to do this of course, but I wanted to show you two halves of a shaft, you know, uh, for the same bottle profile. Um, so I'd have to reverse the bottle rotation for the second one, um, give that a shot. So I'm going to call this uh, forward shaft, if I save this one, um, and then I'll save a copy of it and call it reverse shaft. Um, and then we'll chuck the two of them in an assembly and um, uh, see if we can get them to uh, sort of mesh nicely. So I'll save my reverse shaft and then I'll have to repeat myself with the reverse shaft except this time obviously the bottle is going to start um, with I want to, the shaft to be covering this side of the bottle. So I'm going to um, hit the generate button again with my saved settings in here and this time I'm not starting from zero degrees I'm starting from 60 degrees I think so if I you can see I get a preview down here of the bottle rotating uh, from 60 degrees yeah, so at any point I can hit oh, uh, I can make the end rotation a bit higher um, start rotation of 120 so I, can, I don't have to have a start rotation that's zero I can put in any number that I want in there and see a preview of it but if I start the um, sorry the bottle rotation from 60 and end it at 120 um, I think this is going to give me the result that I want to mesh those two profiles together um, I'm going to leave everything else as it is except I'm going to reverse the bottle direction um, and we're going to give that a shot so uh, I'll leave the accuracy about where it is at the moment um, just to test this I'm going to hit preview and I want to create a preview just so before I commit to generating the smooth geometry Then I'm going to save this part as well as the other forward shaft um, and I want to place them both into an assembly just so that I can see um, just so I can check so I'm just pasting that into the assembly so I can check the movement of the bottle is what I want basically um, so let's just turn off the display of that we can leave the display of the bottle on actually so there's the first shaft my second shaft now I'm going to unground that um, I'm going to spin that round 180 degrees roughly So if I place the two of those together, um, roughly speaking, before I generate the full shaft, you can see if I turn off the display of those other solid bodies, of the solid body that represents the bottle, turn that off, there we are. So now you can see that as the triangular bottle rotates it is rotating in the same direction for both shafts so uh, I'm pretty confident that I can hit go on that now um, on this shaft if I open that one up again um, I can bring up my saved settings and I can just hit go on the smooth build here um, in order to uh, to create the reverse side so I'm going to pause it here as well Okay, so now we've got a solid uh, geometry for this one as well, and I'm going to uh, turn off the visibility of the bits that I don't want, and save that shaft and throw it in the assembly with the forward shaft as well. Okay, and then all I'd have to do is to constrain them and do a quick animation if I want to, so uh, if you can bear with me for just a second, I'll, I'll do that.
So I'm going to put a equation on this. I'm going to call this angle here drive me. And I'll make it equal to uh, 10 degrees at the moment. I just need to do the same with this offset other part here. So I'm going to create an offset plane um, that I'm going to use to define to position the second shaft and constrain that in place as well. Get the two shafts uh, flush to each other and then specify the angle for that one as well. See if we can get this in roughly the right position. So it's going to be something like that. So if I get an angle constraint between the XY plane and the XY plane there. I'll call this, uh, this one's going to be equal to drive me um, times minus 1, I think. Or maybe drive me minus 180 times minus 1. There we go, that looks hopeful. So if I say OK to that, and if I turn off the display of this work plane here, and also this other solid body of the bottle, Now if I'm to drive that uh, drive me constraint, there we are, we can hopefully see if I drive it in reverse that might look a bit better. You can see that bottle, that triangular bottle turning slowly as it moves along. Nice smooth geometry and the pitch is also changing as it moves along the shaft. Good job.